Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. <clears throat> and if you recall correctly, in a previous uh, video I talked about how Newton uh, and Leibniz failed miserably to explain their methods with respect to the derivative. And in this video I'm going to show you how they both failed also with respect to the integral. And what you're seeing in front of you right now is Newton's famous De Analisi. Okay, it's uh, the book that he wrote on calculus. And here's another image of it, another couple of pages out of it. And he demonstrates how he gets areas of these curves. Okay, but in every, in, in, in every instant, <clears throat> he doesn't provide a general definition. He never provided a general definition. So what I'm going to talk about today is one of the methods that he used, and I'm just going to close those tabs. So <clears throat> the method that he used was based uh, on this part of his manuscript where he hypothesizes that the area under this blue curve, the area under the blue curve, not the red curve, because the red curve is the primitive or the integral, okay? So he hypothesized that the area under the blue curve is given by this expression, okay? So what does that mean? It means that he starts off with the integral and he assumes that one part of the area, of the total area from A to Vita, not from A to B, but from A to Vita, um, he assumes that this part here is given by the formula and he forms a rectangle as you see over here this rectangle the first one not not a trapezium but k delta vita b and he says that that's the remaining part and so he hypothesized that if the sum of these areas this blue area and this rectangle uh, are reduced then what you end up getting is that v becomes the y ordinate something like this okay so v becomes y and then he could easily say well since y is equal to v then this formula uh, and, and it reduces to y is equal to a over x to the m which i'll explain to you in a minute then this formula was a correct guess okay so he he guessed it he he never proved it and in fact i maintain that such a formula uh, could never be proved without the mean value theorem because what you're looking at here is the fundamental theorem of calculus. You're looking at this, uh, for the blue area, you're looking at this ordinate subtract zero, and for the total area here, this ordinate subtract zero, okay? So now, um, so he started off with rules, okay, and and then he showed that his area method um, reduces to an antecedent, well, is an antecedent function that reduces to its derivative. And that's what it that's what it means when he finds when he finds y in terms of the other formula, and it y turns out to be y turns out to be the expression a x to the m over n. Okay, as the rectangle is diminished, as this rectangle here is diminished. So, um, so, so Newton really, <laughs> you know, and of course, uh, this here shows you how he did it. He, he first of all uh, hypothesized that z of x plus o is equal to z of x, which is the blue area, and that ov is the area ov is the area of the rectangle and of course he expresses ov in terms of the integral and shows that it reduces to the derivative which is this function y is equal to ax m over n and i didn't actually show you the working of how you get that but when you back substitute you get y is equal to ax to the m over n and so so as you can see at no time did newton actually prove the above result and in fact, he could not prove it because he didn't know the mean value theorem. And the mean value theorem is how we realize the fundamental theorem of calculus. I was the first to prove the fundamental theorem of calculus without faith. 
using the mean value theorem. It turns out that you can prove it in one step. All you need is to, to have the mean value theorem, and then in the next step you have the fundamental theorem of calculus. So it was I who solved the tangent line slow problem in areas rigorously for the first time. Okay, and check these links out, and you can also see the proofs on pages 94, 104, and 130 of my free ebook. So how did Newton and Leibniz probably discover the relationship is the next interesting question. Well, they probably started out with simple functions like constant functions, which uh, he interpreted as a derivative, and straight lines, which he interpreted as integral. And both of those uh, have areas that are very easy to find without calculus, without the methods of the fundamental theorem. And then, of course, he proceeded to more difficult ones like the parabola. And thanks to Archimedes, both of them could find the, could do a similar exercise with x cubed and 3x squared. So <laughs> Newton wouldn't have touched x cubed with a 100-foot barge pole because there was no way he would be able to do that. So uh, originally he did it using the knowledge that was um, already established by Archimedes. Okay, so in other words, you can find the area of a, of a parabola and then, of course, just do a difference with the ordinates. As you see here, just subtract this ordinate from this ordinate, okay? Right? So, so um, this is a general idea behind the fundamental theorem and how it relates to its derivative. And this is the correct way to express it. It's the integral of f prime of x is equal to, from a to b is equal to f of b minus f of a. And Newton was a master of approximations, okay? It is my opinion that he extended this idea to any smooth function, conjecturing that it would hold just as expected from the theorem. So neither Leibniz nor Newton proved the conjecture, and it remained unsatisfactorily proved until my new calculus, um, where I showed that the fundamental theorem is derived from the mean value theorem, and I do it in two ways. I do it using the flawed machinery of mainstream mathematics and also using the new calculus, which does not contain any ill-formed concepts like infinity, infinitesimals, and the circular rot of limit theory. So if you're not already a subscriber, become, become one. Tell your friends about my channel. Tell your, tell your friends about me. Visit my academia page where you'll find lots of articles and uh, some applets and of course links to many of many other interesting articles I've written okay so that's pretty much it I'll put a link in the details section to all this relevant information and uh, also a link to a place where you can contribute to my efforts um, and my research okay so uh, this is a new calculus channel I'm John Gabriel till next time